And Robbie Alexander is uh, not one of those. He's at Alexander. He's not at Alexander. He's at Wangaratta. And good morning to you, man. It's very, very early or very late for you, is it? Uh, early, Rex, early. Oh, it's about normal. I normally get up early. Robbie, a little bit more serious this morning on this subject. The attraction of small streams in trout fishing areas is a magical thing to have. Oh, I just love it. It's, it's just brilliant. It's exciting. It's peaceful. It's relaxing. It's uh, everything you want from a fishing adventure. I love it. I believe it is just one of the most peaceful things you can actually do. I, I, I reckon it's fantastic to go up the streams in the northeast of the state uh, where you live and, and not see another human during the day and then come down into the Myrtleford Please Slow Down sign and some bastard has just gone bang with a double barrel shotgun and blown the sign away. Absolutely magnificent, isn't it? But on a serious note, uh, where does your love for fishing streams come from? Because you, uh, apart from a lovely cod in season, it's your attraction to the sport of angling. As a young kid, my mum and dad used to take me out every weekend. We'd have a little wood fire barbecue and fish some of the local small streams in the area. And I've just loved it ever since, Rex. It's just something that I've grown up with and, and just loved all my life. Uh, like a lot of us, did you start with a humble worm in a backwater of a small trickle? That's exactly what, we, what I started with, yeah. I actually used worms for quite a lot of years before I started... Uh, started using spinners in my teenage years. Spinners, for our people who are not uh, uh, au fait with angling terms, spinners are not those boys and girls laying in the gutter outside the nightclub <laughs> at Paran as I speak. Uh, but what is a spinner? Uh, I started off with a revolving blade spinner, like a little seltzer or a super vibrax. It's a little, a little metal lure with a blade that revolves around in circles or spins as it comes through the water and sends out vibrations which attract the fish. And for those people who have some knowledge of fly fishing, they may not be fly fishermen or fishing persons or whatever is the right thing to say, in our anglers, uh, why would a trout who sometimes has a reputation of being a wily old fish actually take a piece of metal when there's a natural mayfly or a grasshopper there for him to scoff down? Uh, a few reasons, Rex. It could be out of curiosity. A lot of the time it's out of aggression because they can be quite territorial. And quite often just a bubble line that they send through or the vibrations can act as a, like a wounded insect, sending out, uh, sending out vibrations and stuff through the water. So from the humble worm to a tiny yabby uh, to a floating grasshopper to a floating cricket to a spinner, either a vibrax, a rooster tail or a selter, you now have progressed to fly fishing, but you don't do that exclusively. No, look, I enjoy fly fishing. I, as you know, I'm, I absolutely love it. I get a lot of laughs out of it. Oh, you've actually lifted my level of fly fishing expertise quite a bit before uh, you gave me a few pointers. I wasn't catching very many, so I do catch a few, but I'm by no means an expert, and it's just uh, something I do as a challenge and something I really enjoy, but at the same time, I can't break away from casting lures or even drifting a cricket from time to time. I just love it all. I guess, uh, I guess I'm what you call an addict. Right around Australia, we're listening to Rob Alexander from Wangaratta, our northeast reporter, and he'll be back at 10 to 8 giving us an update on what is happening in all things Murray Cod and Trout and particularly Redfin, which are going wonderfully well up there in the mountains. Uh, before we let you go, uh, it is a well-known fact that the streams in the northeast of Victoria, like a lot in this mainland of ours, have been ravaged by the drought. But that's all over now, and they're flowing wonderfully well, and there's never been a better time to go trout fishing. Yeah, that's exactly right. Most of the streams have recovered really well. There's a couple that are struggling. Some of them, uh, the numbers are a bit low, but they are still rebounding. But on the whole, we've seen the best trout fishing here in the, in the last six months that we've had in the last ten years. They've, they've come back from nowhere, and it's just a testimony to just how good these trout are as a surviving fish. Before I let you go, Robbie, and uh, some people might find it difficult to get into trout fishing because, you know, of the small streams. They don't know about uh, uh, reading the river and where the fish are going to be. A, a great fish is the English perch. It's probably more commonly called a redfin. And this is the bread and butter fish of fresh water, just like the humble mullet and flathead in salt water. If you take a kid fishing, take him to Eildon, take him to William Hovel, or take him with his red fin, and you get him or her hooked for life on little reddies. Oh, that's exactly right. They're one of my favourites. And uh, we've been catching quite a few redfin in some of these small streams in the last few months while we're chasing trout just as a bycatch. And they're, 
they're always a pleasant surprise when you catch one when you're not intending to as well. Take a breath and uh, go and check Loretta and the girls and make sure I haven't woken them up with my uh, producer ringing you and we'll be back with you at 10 to 8 with an update on what's happening up there in the northeast. and thank you for your time. No worries. Thank you, Rex. Bye-bye. Robbie Alexander, our northeast reporter.